So our next question is, what sort of things should you be aware of um, when teaching and neurodiverse uh, students? So in this new way of looking at things for us, we think it's the same things as we would take into account when we're teaching all students. Because the way that we see difficulties in the classroom or at home or wherever, is that these difficulties come from a fundamental uncertainty and almost more importantly, a search for certainty that has arisen in order to fix all this uncertainty. So the behaviors in the classroom that are unexpected, we see as behaviors that simply reflect that person's search for certainty. So what we do in terms of learn, in terms of trying different ways of supporting these students is obviously, first of all, ask ourselves, where is the main uncertainty come from? We've addressed that slightly before, but the next thing we do is usually to move on and look at the way we teach in terms of the way we structure uh, lessons, small group work, whatever it is. And there's an approach called universal design for learning, which lots of you will know about. And it really fits neatly into this way of looking at classroom difficulties because it says we need to be aware of offering a structure. So, for example, in a lesson that might be beginning and ending the lesson in the same way, beginning with a sort of, I don't know, where in the world is this photograph, for example, in a geography lesson. And we might end by setting the homework or talking a little bit about what it is we're going to do in the next lesson. And we might have other structures that are consistent within a lesson. So perhaps when you move from one activity to another, you always do it in a very predictable way. And that might literally be in terms of using the same language or using some kind of marker to signal that part of the lesson's over, we're starting this new bit. But within that, we offer choices. So to give students a sense of agency, a sense of control over some of the things that happen to them, we interleave this structure nice predictable structure with things that students can choose to do. So we might offer what well, within lessons, usually and hopefully teachers are using various multimedia approaches to get the information across. So mixtures of video, spoken word, written word, pictures, um, to sort of offer um, different ways of representing information. And then alongside that, we offer students ways, flexible options, if you like, for how they engage in the lesson, how they record information, and perhaps how we take feedback. So we might give them a choice of using drawings, mind maps, charts, cartoons, anything that gives them a sense of agency in all of this. It's like, oh, I've got a choice here. Not only is that more engaging, but it means that they can choose ways of representing what they know as in a way that they feel comfortable with and that plays to their strengths, if you like. Um, and whenever we're looking at engaging students, we do as much as we can at looking at their personal experience and making, bringing those experiences into the lesson. Um, we offer choices in terms of how much somebody moves. So we might set up um, situations where they move from individual work to group work, and you might make the groups draw from different parts of the classroom so people get a chance to get up and move about, might get people to act out different situations or different role plays within a session. So what we're doing for everybody, not just the students who perhaps appear to struggle more, is offering this, them this mixture of structure that kind of doesn't move and that's nicely predictable and agency. So this chance to do things in a little bit more the way you want to. And, and that's what's so lovely about universal design for learning and why it fits so nicely into our chapter on structure, which is, as Jamie was saying, where we usually start in terms of building more certainty. Um, so, yeah, just to sort of add to what Claire was saying, you know, it's recognising that every single class we're teaching is filled with children, young people who think differently. And nobody's going to have a kind of single set way of kind of seeing something or interpreting things. As Claire was saying, that's why we have these multiple ways of representing information, multiple ways of engaging children, young people, and multiple ways in which they can demonstrate uh, their knowledge and understanding and recognizing that the needs and the difficulties that we're going to be seeing in our children, young people have that similar underlying factor and those sorts of uh, behaviors, 
difficulties um, the children are having are, are driven by uncertainty. So the behaviors we're seeing is that exaggerated need for control, that need for certainty. And so we're saying that where's the uncertainty and how can we put support in place to in the short term reduce that and in the longer term increase that child or young person's capacity to manage uncertainty because it is inevitable it is kind of woven into the fabric of life um so certainly longer term we're looking to increase children young people's ability to manage um when faced with uncertainty